One sentence sounds routine. It doesn't raise alarms or declare an emergency, and yet in this airplane at this moment it meant the future had just been chosen. The sentence was simple. We're getting our gear down. Those words were transmitted calmly over the radio during the final minutes of the flight that killed Greg Biffle. They sound like progress. They sound normal. They sound reassuring. But aerodynamically, they represent something far more serious, a non-reversible physical state change. This video is not about blame. It is not about second guessing. And it is not about claiming that one sentence caused a crash. But to be clear, this video is about understanding why that sentence tells us the airplane had already crossed a threshold from which recovery was no longer possible. Not about blame, not about second guessing, and not about claiming that one sentence caused a crash. Because in aviation, some moments don't look dramatic, but they close every other option. To understand why that single sentence matters, we first have to separate how landing configuration feels from what it does. To most people, and even to many experienced travelers, getting ready to land sounds provisional. It sounds like preparation, something you can start, pause, or reverse if conditions change. Psychologically, it feels like moving closer to safety while still keeping options open. Aerodynamically, that assumption is false. Landing configuration fundamentally reshapes how an aircraft exchanges energy with the atmosphere. It alters the balance between lift, drag, thrust, and gravity, and it does so immediately, not gradually. Once those surfaces move, the airplane is no longer the same machine it was seconds earlier. Lowering landing gear introduces a large increase in parasite drag. The gear is designed to withstand loads, not to minimize airflow disruption. When extended, it behaves like an anchor in the wind, creating resistance that must be overcome continuously, not just during descent. Flaps add another layer. While they do increase lift at lower speeds, they do so by increasing the wing's curvature and angle of attack, which also increases drag significantly. In jet aircraft, this trade-off is particularly severe because thrust does not scale linearly with drag at low speeds. As airspeed decreases, drag rises faster than thrust can respond. This relationship is not aircraft-specific. It is one of the most fundamental truths in aerodynamics and is reinforced repeatedly in training manuals, certification standards, and accident investigations across decades. At low altitude, slow speed and high weight jets are operating in a narrow corridor where small configuration changes produce large performance consequences. In many jet aircraft, extending landing gear and flaps can double or even triple total drag compared to a clean configuration. That means engines must work dramatically harder just to maintain level flight and far harder to climb. And this is where timing becomes decisive. Jet engines cannot instantly compensate for sudden drag increases. They require time to spool, and at low altitude and low speed, their effective thrust is limited even at maximum power. There are scenarios where regardless of pilot input, the available thrust simply cannot exceed the drag being generated. This is why configuration is not neutral. Yes, landing gear can be retracted mechanically but energy cannot be recovered mechanically. Altitude lost while configured is gone. Airspeed that bleeds away is gone. Time spent descending cannot be reclaimed. Once configuration begins, the airplane starts spending energy faster than it can earn it. And even if the crew later attempts to reverse the configuration, the airplane does not reset to its earlier state. It continues forward with fewer resources than before. That is why configuration feels like preparation, but functions as a declaration. It declares that the aircraft believes it has enough energy altitude speed thrust and time to complete the landing without needing to climb, accelerate, or buy margin again. That declaration only works if the margin truly exists. Aviation safety becomes much easier to understand when we stop framing outcomes in terms of skill and start framing them in terms of energy. Skill determines how efficiently energy is used. It does not create energy. For non-pilots, the most intuitive way to grasp this is through a simple accounting analogy. Think of energy as cash on hand. Think of altitude as savings. Think of engine thrust as income. And think of drag as expenses. As long as income exceeds expenses, the flight continues comfortably. When expenses exceed income, the aircraft begins spending savings. And when savings reach zero, no amount of effort changes the math. That is not blame. That is accounting. In this flight, the crew reported a rough engine. Without speculating on causes or severity, that statement alone carries meaning. A rough engine is not producing smooth, predictable thrust. Even if it continues running, it introduces uncertainty into the energy equation. Now layer in another unavoidable reality shortly after takeoff, a jet aircraft is near maximum takeoff weight. Fuel load is high. The airplane is heavy. And heavy airplanes require more lift to remain airborne. 
More lift means either more airspeed or a higher angle of attack, both of which increase drag. So even before configuration changes, the aircraft is already operating with elevated energy demands. From there, three compounding truths emerge that can be stated safely and objectively. The aircraft was heavy, available thrust was degraded or uncertain, and landing configuration dramatically increased drag. At that point, the central question is no longer whether the airplane is controllable. The real question becomes whether available energy exceeds required energy. This is where jet aircraft differ sharply from other categories of airplanes. Single-engine performance in jets is highly sensitive to configuration. In clean configuration, some jets can maintain altitude on one engine often with little margin to spare. Introduce landing gear and that capability frequently disappears. This is not conjecture. It is published certified performance data across numerous jet types. Many jets cannot maintain level flight on one engine with landing gear extended even at maximum thrust. That does not mean the aircraft suddenly becomes unstable or uncontrollable. It means it becomes unclimbable. And that distinction is critical. Control authority tells you where the airplane is pointed. Energy state determines whether it can remain airborne. Once drag exceeds thrust altitude, becomes currency, and it drains rapidly. This is where precision matters both technically and ethically. We do not need to know which engine was affected. We do not need exact thrust values, we do not need precise weight calculations, we only need to acknowledge physics that apply broadly across jet operations. Jets are designed to be efficient at cruise high altitude, high speed, clean configuration. Near the ground, slow, heavy, and configured, they are operating in the least forgiving region of their performance envelope. Unlike turboprops, which often retain strong thrust characteristics at low-speed light jets, rely heavily on forward airspeed to convert engine power into usable thrust. As airspeed decreases, thrust effectiveness decreases with it. This creates a compounding effect. Every knot of airspeed lost reduces thrust effectiveness. Every increment of flap increases drag. Every foot of altitude lost reduces the time available to respond. And none of this announces itself with drama. The airplane does not suddenly buffet. The controls do not go slack. The cockpit does not erupt into alarms. The aircraft can remain stable, responsive, and apparently under control, even as the energy margin collapses beneath it. This is one of the most dangerous illusions in aviation. Stability feels like safety, but stability does not guarantee survivability. Once configured, a jet with degraded thrust may still fly, but it is flying downhill in energy terms, whether that descent is immediately obvious or not. This is not about mistakes. It is not about poor decisions. It is about operating in a regime where there is no surplus energy left to trade. The aircraft did not become unforgiving because someone erred. It became unforgiving because physics does not negotiate. This brings us to the most human part of the sequence. Why does configuration feel like safety? Because psychologically, it represents closure. Lowering gear and flaps aligns the cockpit with familiar procedures. It turns an ambiguous situation into a checklist-driven one. It creates a clear objective land, the airplane. Human factors research has documented this tendency extensively. It is often described as goal completion bias or premature commitment, the inclination to commit to a plan once action toward it has begun, even as conditions deteriorate. In aviation, landing configuration is one of the strongest signals of goal completion available. It reduces mental workload. It narrows attention. It replaces uncertainty with sequence. For a brief moment, everything feels more organized. But physics does not care how organized the cockpit feels. Drag does not announce itself audibly. Airspeed decay is gradual, not sudden. Descent rates often look normal until they aren't. The airplane does not provide a clear warning that a threshold has been crossed. It simply stops offering solutions. This is why these scenarios are so dangerous. The cues that would normally prompt urgency often appear only after the ability to recover has already disappeared. From the outside, the flight still looks coherent. From the inside, it can feel like progress. But in reality, altitude and time are bleeding away quietly one irreversible step at a time. So where is the moment recovery became impossible? Not at a specific second. Not at a specific control input. Not at a specific checklist item. The moment can be defined cleanly, objectively, and without speculation. Recovery became impossible when the aircraft's required energy exceeded its remaining energy with no mechanism to reverse that imbalance. Once the aircraft was configured for landing with degraded thrust at low altitude, the math no longer worked. No amount of skill can overcome a thrust deficit. No amount of calm can generate energy. 
No amount of control authority can produce climb without power. This is one of the hardest truths in aviation to accept. An airplane can be fully under control and still be unrecoverable. The cockpit can be calm, the radios can be calm, the flight can sound routine, and yet the outcome is already sealed. That is why the sentence matters. We're getting our gear down, does not cause a crash. But it tells us the aircraft had entered a physical state from which escape was no longer possible. It marks the transition from actively solving a problem to relying on whatever energy remains. And in aviation hope is not a performance parameter. Aviation does not punish panic. It punishes commitments made without margin. The Greg Biffle crash is unsettling precisely because nothing dramatic happened. There was no explosion, no chaos, no frantic radio call. The airplane kept flying, the crew stayed composed, and physics quietly took over. The most dangerous moments in aviation are often not the loud ones, they are the calm ones where the airplane is still flying, the radios still sound normal, and the future has already been chosen. That is why this sentence matters. Not because it assigns fault, but because it teaches a lesson written into the laws of aerodynamics. Once energy is gone, skill has nothing left to work with. And aviation above all else is unforgiving of commitments made after the margin is already spent.